Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. 2, 3. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual sounds, singing with grace in your hearts unto the Lord. Let the word of God dwell in our hearts, what? Richly. Richly. Bible says we, we should be living epistles. You know, some people don't come and talk to me. You know why? Because they already know what I'm going to tell them. They all, before they come, they already know. And then some people come and talk to me, and then they tell me what they think I, I want them to say. They're not really telling me what's going on. You know, they don't, they're not really being real. They just tell me what they think they should be saying to me. And that doesn't help the situation. But it's not truthful. But the Bible says, let the word of God dwell in you richly. In all wisdom. That word wisdom there is a very nice word. In the Greek, it's the word Sophia. S-O-P-H-I-A. Sophia. It is the word, is one of the root words where we get this word from. Sophistication. Where we also get this English word from. Philosophy. And it means to have insight, to have skill, to have intelligence. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. And so when the word of God is dwelling in us richly, we get skill. We have intelligence. We, we operate with a level of sophistication. Hallelujah. I love that one, you know. Sophistication. We are fine-tuned that when situations happen, the word of God comes and it begins to address it. And we begin to know what to do, when to do, because God by his spirit is giving us information through his word. And when we begin to employ the word of God and begin to live by the word of God, we begin to experience the victory of God. We begin to get healed. We begin to get delivered. Because our thinking begins to change. We're not thinking like the world thinks. The world is trying to get us to think a particular way. When you listen to the radio stations and the television stations, you can tell what slant they have politically. You can tell what type of information they're feeding you. Because they, all, they are all biased and they all have their agenda. And they're just indoctrinating and, and confusing and, 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 and causing the people to be so confused and so misled. And so you cannot depend upon them for information. Because number one, they're not speaking the truth. They are turning things to suit what they want you to believe. And so we need to be independent thinkers. That have the word of God in our hearts. And we are not concerned with, overly concerned with what's going on upon the face of this earth. As the only thing we are concerned about is preaching the kingdom. Establishing the kingdom. Bringing men and women out of darkness and into the kingdom of God. We have to have a biblical view of everything. Because the things that we think are important, they're not in the grand scheme of things. They are not important. They are not important. Let somebody, don't, listen, don't fight some, pick and choose your battles you want to fight them on. There's some battles I'm not fighting. It makes no sense. I'm going to save my energies for the one that the Lord wants me to fight. Wisdom. Let the word of God dwell in you in wisdom. 
And when you begin to walk in this wisdom, your health will improve. You will be delivered from darkness. Glory be to God. You will walk as a son of God and overcome in this earth. All wisdom. He said walk in all wisdom. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20. Let's talk. Let's see what Paul says about wisdom. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made the foolish? Had not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This world's strutting around right now. Well, they thought they were strutting around. Amen? And one little virus, I'm told, the lowest form of life, glory be to God, has shut almost everything down. And I keep telling people, as they read the Bible, the, the best is yet to come. As they read it, the best is yet to come. The Bible says, in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above every other mountain. And every high hill that seems to want to exalt itself will be made low. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Let the world go ahead. They're strutting around right now. They're proud. They're proud. They got their own wisdom. They count the wisdom of God as foolishness. But God looks at the wisdom of this world as foolishness. For after that, in the, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. The world by its wisdom does not know God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Preaching is really some foolishness sometimes. I'm telling you, boy. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And this is coming from a preacher. Hallelujah. Because what we teach and the wisdom that we teach and the word that we teach is so diametrically opposite to what the world teaches. It's not funny. It is so opposite. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says the blind will lead the blind and both of them will go into the ditch. It is your responsibility as a Christian, irregardless of what any preacher say or do, it is your responsibility to search the scriptures for yourself. And to think for yourself. You have a brain. God gave you one. Think. And on top of that, he gave you a spirit. Use it. Paul himself say, he say, if any, he say, if any angel come down here and preach any other gospel than what I have preached, he say, let him be accursed. So certain he was that this was the word of God that he's given. And people are doing stuff, and that is why we have in the churches today. People who are laden with sins and they cannot be delivered and they cannot be set free. See this wisdom he's talking about here? Verse 21. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jew requires a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them that are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Here with Christ, 
the power of God. But power to who? To them that believe. Power to do what? Power to save. Power to heal. Power to deliver. Power to set free. Power to live right. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Yeah, listen to what the scripture say. it says. Let no man deceive himself. There's a lot of self-deception going on. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Some people think they're okay when they're not okay. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem it to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. You hear that? Yeah, you say, if anybody among you think that he is wise in this world, that he's got this world wisdom, and he thinks he can operate like that to serve the Lord, he said, let him become a fool that he can become wise. I have started praying for myself. And let me tell you some of the prayers I pray for myself. Lord, can you open my eyes, please? Father, can you remove the scales from my eyes, please? Help me to see. Give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I do not want to assume that I can see this time I'm operating in darkness. Because that darkness will be a greater darkness than the darkness with the unbeliever. Verse 19. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he takes the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are vain, they're a waste of time, they're futile. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas of the of or the world of life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours and you are Christ and Christ is God's. Hallelujah. Yeah, everything belongs to you. But don't walk in the wisdom of this world. Glory be to God. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1. I'm reading verse... One, I'm reading the whole of chapter two. I'm just going to read. I'm not going to quote there because I want to get down to um, the second part of Colossians chapter three. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not in excellency of speech or of wisdom. I didn't come with speech. I didn't come with wisdom. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear, and in much trembling. My, oh, King of kings, hallelujah, and glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. How be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I love it. I love it. The devil always overplays his hand. We give him too much credit. He is in darkness. He doesn't understand the word. He doesn't understand light. He is in total darkness. Total darkness. But as it is written, I have not seen, ne'er ear have heard, neither entered into the heart of men the things which God had prepared for them that love him, but God had revealed it. Reveal them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, but have the, saved the spirit of man which is in him? Even the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received 
not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us of God. Hallelujah. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teach, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Listen, I have heard from the time I was, I've been in Christianity, I have heard people say, this person is so spiritual, they're not one earthly good. Well, I've come to tell you that that is, a so, that is such a stupid remark. Because if somebody is spiritual, they're going to be very well earthly good. They're going to be perfect on this earth. We need to be spiritual. But the natural man receive not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are what? foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned but he that is spiritual judgeth all things yet he himself is judge of no man for he for who knows the mind of the lord that he might instruct him but we have the mind of christ glory be to god glory be to god We've got the mind of Christ. We think like Christ. We operate like Christ. We believe like Christ. Hallelujah. We don't think like this world. And that's why the world, they don't understand us. And that's why they ridicule us. Because they don't understand the wisdom of God. They don't understand the word of God. They don't believe it anyway. That's their business. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. I tell you, that's where I reach in Revelation. I'm living that right now. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. 